you get the prop facing towards the ground a little bit, it'll actually lift you instead of shove you. Okay. You might want to get closer. Maybe sit in a chair like right there. This guy. So this, yeah, this GoPro. It's like wide angle. You got like the whole house. It's probably yeah, getting Bruce there. <laughs> there you go. Okay, super training. Specifics, pieces. Um, angle of the prop, uh, which is a big one that we have to work on. There's other pieces that are more important. Most important, don't lose control of the glider. Keep the glider above you. And of course, we spend all that time on glider control. So lean, walk, pull is the first big piece which takes hours and hours. And I mean, how many hours do you think you've spent kiting? Mm -hmm. Anyone? Mm -hmm. At least, what, 40? At least. 40, 30 to 60, 30 to 50, in there somewhere. That's how many hours you guys have spent kiting at super training so that you're not trying to learn how to kite while flying because that's a disaster and it gets really ugly. Um, okay, so now pieces like <laughs> throttle. Um, it's shoving him into the ground because he's still leaning forward. And so you're like, Wah! and it's shoving you down. Um, also, you really want to listen to the words coming out of my mouth and just let me robot you. Because when I say hit the throttle, it's like the timing. It's I am giving you the what, when, and how much to perfection, so you don't have to even think about it. If you do it exactly when I say, it's important that you react immediately. When I say throttle, you should be pulling the throttle as fast as you heard it, basically. Because I'm only giving you three quarters of a second for reaction time, and so I'm watching your wing. If I see your wing overflying you, and I say throttle, it will push you out in front of the wing, and it'll save you from taking a massive collapse. Or if I say brakes, it's because I'm seeing, I know what's gonna happen. And so the better you can react immediately, given that, you know, three quarter of a second reaction time, I'm literally giving you time to react to where it would save it. Especially if I'm saying it over and over and over and over, you have to just trust it and just do it. Because the second you do it, you'll be like, oh, that feels much better. <laughs> and you're like, you feel like you're losing it, but if you hit the throttle and it push you out in front of the wing, or you hit brakes when I said, it's immediately gonna feel much better and it'll save your bacon from whatever is happening. Don't think now, don't think why now, learn why after. Yeah, it's like as we robot you through it, you'll start getting a feel for it, you'll start then doing it, and then I can talk less and less. And pretty soon, as you guys get over 100 flights, you know, I'm just giving a few pointers there, here and then. Uh, okay. Dropped into a seat. There you go. There you go. Add throttle. Add throttle. Stand straight up. Man. Stand straight up. See how he's leaning way forwards? Stand up. Hit throttle. But you have to do both of them basically at the same, same time, preferably. Throttle. Stand up. So the thrust, as the thrust is hitting, it's pushing. As opposed to throttle here and then try and stand up. First it smashes you into the ground and then you lean and it chucks you and rips you off your feet. So it's better if you hit throttle and then as the engine spools up, you're leaning back into it, which again, that perfectionist thing, we want it just right so it, it makes it as easy as possible. Push throttle, 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 straight. See how he's crouching? He's getting lower and lower because the thrust is shoving him into the ground. And so he's like almost falling down. His legs are bent and he's trying to run like this because he's getting smashed into the ground instead of leaning back and letting the gear do the work. Also, if he added brake right there, that would also lift him up back onto his legs. Brakes, brakes. And so if you're going down, I'm gonna be going brakes, 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 throttle, brakes, brakes, throttle. That will pick you up. And if the glider's too loaded, I might say, whoa, hands up, hands up. Or ease off the throttle, but usually we don't ease off the throttle. Once you get on the throttle, you wanna hold it consistent and add or subtract. So now, the glider is diving off to the right. So I'm saying right hand up because he's holding both brakes. If you look at where his hands are, he's pulling both brakes because he just got off the ground 
and he's now rocking to the right. As the glider's going right, I'm saying put your right hand up so you stop increasing the energy to the right, but actually decrease the energy to the right. That's your oscillation control and part of your torque control. Although torque is the left. So now the glider's back above him, but because he's on throttle and he's still weight shifting incorrectly, he's still torquing right, the glider's gonna try and go back to the right again at this point. So now I'm telling him left brake now to prevent the glider from ever going right in the first place. So I'm telling him to prevent something that's going to happen in the next second. Your elbows, left brake only, left. So he did it perfectly. He added brake and you see the glider whoop, come right up above him. Brake only, go, left brake only, left brake, left brake, left brake, left brake, left brake. Now he pulled too much. So now he's turning left, which he doesn't need to turn left, he just wants to keep the glider above him, but you know, who cares about that? It's He's overreacting to what I'm saying, but he's doing what I'm saying, he just did a little too much of it. We can polish that later. That type of stuff doesn't matter, just do the best you can, and we'll polish it off as we go. Throttle jump, circle right. Throttle jump, throttle jump, drop. So he's too low, if he turns right right now, and his motor dies, he would have to do it perfectly in order to land that back into the wind. So now I'm beating into you guys, altitude on your downwind, which you'll find all comes later. There's so many pieces that you get at super training you don't get at any other school in the world. I mean, listen listen to, to flight videos. It's kind of interesting. Once you go through super training, you watch a video of another school and listen to the instruction they get. All they're gonna get, throttle, 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 go, pressure. Good job, that's it. There's none of these little fine tuning details, polishing exact glider weight shift, canceling the torque, canceling the oscillation, watching the direction, climbing out perfectly into the wind, making sure you have the perfect wind, making sure your downwind is exactly the correct altitude. There's a zillion little pieces that we're adding to polish you into an actual pilot instead of just get you off the ground. You just gigantic. Throttle, throttle, circle right, jump. Right. Notice he's not oscillating. See the glider's not oscillating. There you go. Okay, that's high enough. Beautiful. Because we fixed it. We fixed it with the left brake now. Right brake now. Left hand up. Left brake. Left hand up. Left brake. Fixed it. It's your last the brakes. Yeah. Oh, okay, coming in. Notice he didn't pull all of it. So his hands are still here. They need to be here. And then he threw his hands all the way up. Whoop! Boom! Full frontal collapse. Catastrophic failure. <laughs> Um, here's another thing. Again, you won't find any training class in the world. Uh, anyone else will go flare. What the freak does that mean? There's no flare timing, there's nothing. All you do is pull brake. That's it. it. We're giving you exactly what, when, and how much to exact precision. Brake. Every time I say it, do more of it. So I say brake, and then brake, 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 all of it. And so I'm giving you exactly what, when, and how much, and just literally giving you every little detail. All of it, all of it, push the brakes down. And you hear me yelling, full brakes, run. Full brakes, run. I know the glider's gonna front and collapse. And so I'm saying, full brakes, run. Run out in front of the glider to load the glider. Bury the brakes to your ankles and get that glider stopped. Instead, but again, nobody's going to get it perfect. Everybody has to go through the details. Anyone that shows you these first flight videos and it looks like perfect, total lie. Blatant bullcrap. As you all know, you think about it. I mean, your first flights, there's no possible way you're getting it right on your first flight. It's not going to happen. You're not going to nail the play all the time. You're not going to get every piece. Let alone, imagine doing it on day one or day two when you have no ability to control the glider, which 
You guys aren't even going for a flight on your first flight. You're going for touch and goes. We're not expecting you to lose control. We're expecting you to maintain control and take back off. It's pretty incredible, Luigi. Hold the brakes. Hold the brakes. Now lift. 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 Here we go. And this is when everybody screws up. He's turning, not leaning, and he's moving away from his glide. Right now, he should be backing up. See the paramotor's actually tilting a little left. I mean, almost level, but it's tilting left. That's weight shift to the right, but he's actually turning as well. He needs to just be uh, turned right and then sidestep right. You can see the leading edge is collapsing because he's pulling his A's instead of lifting his A's. So his arms, his elbows are literally all the way back to his body because he's pulling the A's and so the front is collapsing. Lift the A's, turn, and sidestep back at a 45. He should be walking back this way. And then he slams brake. He's still not leaning right. Now he should be leaning right and walking back at a 45 degree angle under the glider. Stop the brakes. Boom. Walk gently, turn to the ocean, walk to the ocean, face the ocean, face the ocean. Now I'm talking to him. Face the ocean. We're switching. Watch Martin. Look at it. And he does it. It works because he did it. He turned and he modulated the brake and noticed he was walking towards the ocean. He did the pieces. Boom, no problem. Especially with a flat top, that thing weight shifts awesome. If you actually turn, gliders over here, you turn 90 degrees and just do your wingtip drag that you've done a thousand times. Turn, lean, get that tug of war, smoothly walk. You don't have to run violently or panic. Just lean, get the tug of war, walk into the wind and modulate that right brake and boom, fly it up nice and smooth. Don't try and make it come up fast. Just very slowly bring it above you and stop it above you. But then he turned. Oops. So now he messed up. Lean and turn. That's a turn. His glider's above him. He should be leaning, not turning. So the turn did nothing. So he's probably, oh, he hammered very fast enough. He saved it. But the turn was wrong. That should have been a lean, and he should have been walking back at a 45. Remember to roll the paramotor, and it weight shifts really well. If you lean the paramotor, you're gonna have a huge deflection because you got 22 inch wide comfort bars. You're gonna have a gigantic deflection and all of a sudden you'll feel it'll stop dragging you the load and it'll become effortless. You stick that weight shift in there and effortlessly the glider will come back up when everybody's experience was <laughs> like fighting as hard as you can and you think it's difficult, but it's only difficult because you don't have that piece in there. Get that weight shift. And he's turning. See, he's turning. Notice his left brake is hammered. Two feet, that's like foot and a half, two feet of left brake. He needs zero left brake or just a limp arm on the left brake. Pull left one brake. Up, left hand up, your right brake only. See, left hand up, left hand up, right hand only. Stop turning, lean. You want to turn? Now turn because it's about to hit the ground. Face now, the ocean. now I tell him to turn. Face the wings are dragging, face the ocean, turn your whole body. But he's got to lean more. It's about the tug of war. It's not so much about the walk as it is lean, get the tug of war. You gotta have that loading in the glider and just lean and then you can just walk nice and smooth. Make sure it's consistent. Don't step, stop, step, stop, step, stop because you make the wind blow and then shut off, wind blow. And so just the consistency, lean, get that tug of war, get your turn, and then just channel, break. Turn right, Martin, turn right. And up you'll come. There you go, there you go. Walk to the ocean. Now turn now to face your glider, turn now to face your face glider. glider and lean. Back up, right, right, right. But he didn't do it. Now he's gotta go back into back. it. Go to the ocean, Martin. Turn right. See, he's not getting the turn in there. Now his glider's on the ground, almost upside down, and he's still facing the glider. He needs to be facing the ocean and he has to have limp left arms, almost no left break, right break. Again, all the glider control. Lean, walk, pull, dude. Lean, walk, pull, or turn, walk, pull. Glider hits the ground, turn, walk, pull. Glider's above you, lean, walk, pull. It's funny, it's one, two, three, 
And it's like, it's way more difficult than people think to keep those two separate and just do the pieces. Like your brain turns to fungus when the glider comes up. It's like you're sitting here and you're like, well, duh, turn, walk, pull, oh, oh. And then it's like the glider comes up and like the, you know, the logic goes out the window. So it's kind of good to see it would have been stupid simple if you turn, walk, pull. Or if it was above you, if you lean, walk, pull, stupid simple. Effort goes away, glider stops dragging you. You lean that flat top and that weight shift is gonna work so well, all of a sudden there's no drag. Pulling brakes on an extra large, there is an enormous amount of drag and you're getting your butt drug and fighting it, where if you lean, there's no drag to weight shift. It doesn't create the pull, so then you can just use gentle brakes, keep the glider properly loaded, and you're not fighting your glider. That's why when you see Jordan give us a demo, it looks like he's not even trying. He's literally just standing there, la di da like effortless, like he's taking a nap in a lounge chair because he's making the gear, he's just doing the technique. The lean, walk, pull, make the glider, and it is actually effortless. Uh, literally a 12-year-old can do it, if you do the pieces. You just have to do the pieces. Uh, go ahead, watch. Okay, look which way he's facing. Can you see it? That's jacked. <laughs> that, that ain't good. So he's literally facing this way and his glider's facing that way. You gotta stop doing that. Um, feel it. There's a twist in the risers and you're fighting it. And remember, that's one of the hardest things. It's kind of weird, but that's one of the most difficult things for some reason for people to do. But it's really obvious when you're looking at it from the outside, but when it's you, it's like super hard. But if he hits the throttle right there, the glider will shoot off to the right because he's going to go this way and the glider's going to shoot off that way. Bam! See him fix it? He turned and went with it at that point. That was awesome. That was awesome. Which you can't think about. It's got to be feel, and that feel came from the 50 hours of kiting. If you didn't have the 50 hours of kiting, there's no way, because you can't follow all of these directions. You already have to know what I'm saying, understand the skill, and have the communication back and forth, so you already know what to do. I'm just kind of reminding you, um, because you already feel it. So when I'm talking you through it, it's not like you're going to be able to follow every direction if you didn't know what you were doing. You guys all know what you're doing. I'm just kind of reminding your brain and kind of leading it to stay paying attention to what you need to do right now. And that's how you can respond so quickly to what I said. Look how much brakes he's pulling. The, his brakes are clear down here. Now, can you launch that way? Sure, heck yeah. If there's a fence in front of you or a child, bury them freaking brakes, get off the ground. Once you're in the air, you better get off those brakes smoothly. But yeah, you can use the brakes, but that's not what we want you to do. We want your habit of running it out, get some air speed, hands up, hands up, hands up. You get running as fast as you can until your hands get all the way to the top, then you switch directions and literally four inches of brake. Or if you time it right and you feel a little lift from the glider, literally a half inch to one inch of brake, and boom, you'll just pop off the, the ground so effortlessly. Like a run and jump, you don't pull any brakes. You're working on the timing over and over so that when you feel that lift, that's where you jump. So you feel the lift, boom, you should be adding that little bit of brake. It shouldn't take this much brake to get off the ground. If you pulled that much brake, you were going way too slow. You just didn't have the airspeed. And again, keep in mind, that's a really good launch. I'm asking for perfect. I'm showing you the difference between awesome and freaking perfect. Comes off the ground. Look how clean that is with no oscillation. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like singing a song, having some fun there. <laughs> Doing a jig and not having a woo, I told him to do that. You can see the difference between a guy that's got 140 flights and the guy that's got eight flights. 
huge difference. There's no freaking way you're gonna look like that in eight flights. It's not gonna happen. Or 20 or 30 flights, it's not gonna happen. And it's like, that takes hours and hours doing it over and over and over as you build the feel. Because it's not about last break, it's about doing it at exactly the right time and exactly the right amount to the centimeter or the millimeter. Because if you both pull too much, even a little, it goes the other way. If you didn't pull enough, it's still oscillating. And so it takes a lot of flights to build the feel where, oh, check. And you stop it instantly and you climb out and do it on any size of glider. He's probably on a larger one. Look at that. No oscillation. That's freaking beautiful. And that's piloting. That's not him just doing nothing. That's actually piloting from massive practice here. Very beautiful. Ooh. See him leaning forward. Leaning forward. He's run and he's like, okay, let's go. No, 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 no. Lean backwards, do nothing. Just stand up, take a nap, full throttle, and the motor will chuck you. Make the motor do the work. Stand up, lean back, because now he just added, I mean, it's not a 40, if it was a 45, he'd be adding half the thrust to weight to his back, and 100 pounds would jump on his back. As Joe, he can carry an extra 100 pounds, no problem. But it'd be way easier if he stood up and leaned back, and then he had 30 pounds come off of his legs instead of 100 pounds go on his legs. Stand up. But see, see, he did it right there. Perfect. And so I'm telling him what to do. Get wrap yourself. Full brakes, your full brake. He didn't pull the brakes. You gotta fit. See, even right here is not full brakes. There's another four inches. Point the fingers. And a lot of times people will do this. Oh, I buried the brakes. No, this is buried. And that's a huge difference. And we haven't even grabbed the competition toggles yet. There's a little metal bar up where the brake toggle ties to the brake line. And so you'll flip your hand around and grab that metal bar. That will give you an extra five, six inches of brake. So that when you pull the brake, it'll stop the glider even more. So when you get back home in no wind, you're gonna need to use the competition toggles because pulling an extra six inches of brake will slow you down another two to three miles per hour, which is huge when your feet have to run that extra. I mean, there's a big difference between running four miles an hour and seven miles an hour. Huge difference when you have weight on your back. So he didn't need the lean. He should have gone throttle, lean, wait for the thrust to push just don't lean in the first place. It was a wasted effort, and you burn up a whole lot of beach um, with a wasted effort. But then he leans back, boom. But look again, look where his brakes are. He's pulling brakes, clear the freak to here. If he'd have waited a little longer and gone hands up as he ran, or hands up, hands up, literally another step or so, step or two, and he'd have come off with this much brake instead of this much brake. It would have been a huge, huge difference. And so I'm yelling, hands up, hands up, hands up, get off that brake. Pull the brakes after launch. And that's another, don't pull brakes after launch. Uh, quite a few people do that every now and then. Like you get off the ground and then you keep pulling brakes after you left the ground. That's a huge no-no, don't do that. So uh, pull brakes, as soon as you come off the ground, stop. Um, you pull brakes to get off the ground, and then stop. Unless you start coming back down, then you add brakes. Add brakes. Anytime you're coming down, brake. If you're gonna hit the ground, your brake should be at your ankles. Because that would be a landing. Even if you're gonna crash, the moment you're about to hit the ground is where your brake should be at your ankles to slow down as much as possible. Plus it produces lift by adding brake because everybody's flared too fast and shot up in the air 10 feet. So if you're about to hit the ground and you buried the brakes, you probably won't hit the ground. You'll actually produce lift and you'll miss the ground. And so if you're coming at the ground, brake. If you leave the ground, stop pulling brakes. Yeah. What a steal. As a point back, right brake, right brake, right, right, still small, relax, look side, and left, right. Uh, if you leave the ground, stop. 
unless you're gonna crash, or if you did crash, uh, or you start twisting in the risers. If you start twisting up in the risers, okay, you gotta let off the throttle, fly back down and land. Just be twisting up in the risers would be bad. Um, okay, doesn't matter if you come off squirrely, totally okay. Just fly the glider, hold the throttle, fly the glider, just fly out of it. Because you're going to come out of it, pretty much everybody's going to oscillate on first launch. I mean, unless they're totally lying to you, because it's just, that's the way it goes. Oh, hold the throttle, left brake, she's up and going right, now left hand up. Left brake now. So the glider's swinging above him, left brake, you're, you're canceling the energy of the glider and stopping it above you. Left brake now. So there, now the glider's coming this way. So it's off to his right, and it's coming back above him. So now I'm saying left hand up. Because if you were holding left brake, it would be accelerating to the left. So as it comes above you, I'm saying left hand up, and then left brake. It tries to go that way, we cancel the energy, we cancel the energy. We cancel the energy, we cancel the energy. Glider tries to go that way, left brake, and then it tries to come back, hands up, and then left brake. And after you do that a bunch of times, you'll start to get the hang of how much brake you have to pull for it to just stop above you and not go that way, and stop above you and not actually turn left. So if you do too much, it'll actually turn left. If you don't do enough, it'll keep going off to the right. Oh, I'm left. See it went left? Break now, Martin. Left, right, break. Oh, All the way back. He got, he got it almost perfect. You saw it go just a smidge to the right. It was almost perfect that time. Your brains learn pretty fast. I mean, by the time you get 12, 15, 20 flights, you'd be amazed how good you get at that. And then you can start dropping glider size. And like the guys, you know, flying extra small or medium for a bigger guy, you get a smaller glider that will oscillate, you know, or is more responsive, so it does more of what you tell it to. And then you learn to cancel it. Well, then you got some serious skills. Yeah. 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 Oscillation is it because of the wind, or is it because of the weight, or is it a little bit of combination of everything? Um, you're telling the glider to do it. So gliders, gliders don't oscillate. Well, the Dominator doesn't oscillate. There are gliders that will oscillate under power and try and kill you if you don't stop them. I actually posted not too long ago a video of a guy who crashes into the ground and gets severely injured because they put him on a glider that will oscillate. Um, so that means they put this old guy, he's like 70 years old, put him on a trike on a glider that is not roll stable. He held power, did nothing, and it gets worse and worse and worse until it literally loops face first with the ground horribly bad. The only thing that saved his life is when he looped face first at the ground, his glider went through an antenna and it shredded the glider, but it slowed him enough where he didn't die and just like broke his back and it was catastrophic. But the Dominator is roll stable. So why is it oscillating? Because you told it to. You nailed the throttle and you didn't cancel the torque. So the throttle torqued you to the right. That created a right turn. Then very commonly it goes right, so what do you do? Pull left brake. Well, now you accelerated it to the left, and so then you pull right brake. And so you actually create an oscillation. The glider's doing exactly what you tell it to. If you take off and you cancel the torque with weight shift, so there's no torque, there will be no oscillation unless you tell it to oscillate. Or you jerked brakes too much and you told it to oscillate. So the oscillation, the glider's just doing exactly what you're telling it to. So, but you can't know exactly how much to weight shift. It's impossible. You have to do it with flights because if you did too much, it would oscillate to the left. If you don't do enough, it goes to the right. And so it's through experience. It's like if you only get a few flights, you're not there yet. You gotta get, you, you know, it's like, I don't give a crap about first flight videos. Who gives a crap? I want to see the hundredth flight videos because that's where you start to learn, okay, I need to weight shift this much exactly to keep my paramotor level. And all of you guys with more experience that started getting over a hundred flights, look how you're not oscillating. And a lot of it's because you're canceling the torque and using a little bit of brake or 
you canceled all but this much weight shift and then you canceled the rest with break. So if you torque this much and you break this much, it'll climb out perfectly straight. Preferably, you don't torque at all, in which case you don't need any brakes because you didn't make the glider turn in the first place. So, see, he got that one really nice. That was beautiful. Is he going? Oh, last break three. Now one inch mark. Yeah. Fix it immediately. Whoop. But when you're coming into land, you gotta be very 